evening, we will now begin the Naval Undersea Warfare Center Division Keyport's Hispanic Heritage Month celebration, hosted by the Hispanic Latino Employment Program, or HEP. Bienvenidos. Welcome, everyone. Guests, we will now rise for the performance of our national anthem to be sung by Ms. Shalom. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming way for the land of the Continuous Process Improvement Coordinator for the Maintenance, Engineering, and Industrial Operations, or as I like shortening it, me and I owe. I will also be your Master of Ceremonies for today's celebration. I would like to give a special welcome to our events guest speakers, our New York Division Keyport leader, Senior Leadership, and our guests from the Puget Sound Naval Shipyard and Intermediate Maintenance Facility. On behalf of our Equal Employment Opportunity Deputy, Sam Freiberg, the HEP Program Managers, Norma Domingo and myself, and the HEP participants, I am pleased to welcome you and we are so honored that you chose to You're be here with us today. Our country observes National Hispanic Heritage Month from 15 September to 15 October. During this time, we celebrate the history, the achievements, culture, and contributions of Americans whose ancestors are from Mexico, Spain, the Caribbean, and Central and South America. This means that Hispanic Latino community is not just Mexican. Hispanic Heritage Month encompasses many other countries with various traditions, foods, and arts. Hispanic Latinos have, a pro have had a profound and positive influence on in our country through our strong commitment to family, faith, hard work, and service. Next, I'd like to ask Mr. Paul Tages, our HEP champion, to share a little bit about his experience as our champion. When I was asked by Letty and Norma whether I would be their HEP champion, my first question was whether that was even allowed. Because I'm not Hispanic. Like, 0% to my knowledge. <laughs> so I was reassured that being Hispanic was not a prerequisite. What is required of me is that I am committed to the support and betterment of the goals and objectives for the Special Emphasis Program. However, to this day, actually this morning even, <laughs> when people find out that I'm the HEP champion, they say to me, I had no idea that you're Hispanic. <laughs> Again, I'm not. <laughs> While at first I found this situation pretty amusing, and had a few good laughs, I started to think about it, wonder what are the potential ramifications. The first issue is that myself and others are viewing special emphasis, emphasis programs as something of a click, a for them, by them, or a members only idea. However, this view does not align with the broader goal of bringing awareness to the value of diversity and is in fact contrary to the idea of inclusion. For those of you who looked at special emphasis programs the way I used to, just remember that this way of thinking is preventing very positive engagement, both within the organization and in your life outside of work. And emphasize that these are not members only clubs, and that engagement from all demographics is encouraged. I challenge you then to reach out and engage. We will all benefit from making these connections as individuals and as an organization. Find a group that interests you and attend a meeting. You might even get a bonus. I had tamales and delivered to me. Our first guest 
speaker, was appointed to, by Governor Inslee as the Executive Director for the Washington State Commission on Hispanic Affairs, or CHOP, in August of 2018. Ms. Maria Siguencia. The commission is a statewide organization whose mission is to improve public policy development and the delivery of government services to the Hispanic community. Maria herself was born in Mexico and immigrated with her mother as a young child to the state of Washington. She went on to earn a degree in humanities and social sciences from Western Washington University and has spent her career in many exciting positions. Maria also serves on the Washington State Business Diversity Subcabinet and the Poverty Reduction Workgroup for Governor Inslee. She is a founding member and advisor to the Latino Leadership Network for Washington State employees. Please join me in welcoming Ms. Maria Siguencia. Um, so I'm very honored to be part of your uh, celebration for Hispanic Heritage Month today. I've been leading the Washington State Commission on Hispanic Affairs for the last year, and it has been a whirlwind, a whirlwind of connections, of policy recommendations, and a lot of relationship building. Latinos and Hispanics are so different. We are different in ethnicity. Latinos and Hispanics can be Salvadorian, Argentinian, Panamanian, to name a few, as we have just uh, pointed out. Latinos and Hispanics are different in religion. Some are atheist, some are Protestant, some are Buddhist, and the overwhelming uh, majority are Catholic and Christian. But some are spiritual and not even religious. The list can go on. Latinos and Hispanics are different in race. Some are white, some are native, black, Asian, mixed race. Latinos and Hispanics differ in their political beliefs, representing all possible facets. In closing, the Hispanic and Latino community is vastly different. We are from all over the map, literally, representing all facets of political thought, of religion, race, ethnicity, the list can go on. We are similar in the way that we partner, we're similar in the way that we build relationships, and we build trust, and how we take into account our team. We bring diversity to the table. We are diversity. Through collaboration, relationships, trust, and respect, we build lifelong connections that allow us to work across all boundaries to make a difference. We use the lenses of our cultures in our work in order to serve the best we can. Thank you for letting me recenter and celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month with you. Thank you, Maria. I cumbia dance. Yes. <laughs> all right. Um, up next, we have a special performance from a few of your fellow keyboarders. Are you excited? <laughs> we are using the I Am From Home as a way to celebrate diversity and share with you that no matter our age, our background, disability, any other differences, we are all more than the initial outward appearance. I am from the Operation Game Buzzer, just to be the doctor pulling the Charlie horse. From fluffy rice, savory beans, and my dad's yummy grilling. And on special occasions, I got a McDonald's happy meal. <laughs> I am from a Mexican-American family of five. I am from Pasco, Washington, where I played Cinco Loco and Loteria. I am from University Hospital in San Antonio, Texas. Mom was laboring to bring me into the world, while dad labored to put food on the table. I am from my abuelo, telling his granddaughters, Union libre, common law marriage only. You take care of yourselves because my girls are strong and able. I am from Wilmar, Minnesota. I am from eating tater tot hot dish <laughs> topped with the Midwest's favorite condiment, ketchup. I used more ketchup as a kid in one day than I use in a month now. Ketchup on ham, ketchup on eggs. Ketchup on pork chops, ketchup and steak sauce. You get the idea. I am from Torrance, California, and I come from a biracial family. I'm from the land of I hate peas, and I will pick out every one I see. I am from San Angelo, Texas, and tumbleweeds and catching horned toads in the alley behind the house. I am from Star Wars toys, especially the original Luke Skywalker land speeder toy, and Tonka trunks. Tonka trucks. 
uh, the crane with the working hook and magnet that could pick up my Hot Wheels cars was the best. I'm from Queens Medical Center in Honolulu, Hawaii, and I'm from Care Bears and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I am from Thomason Hospital in El Paso, Texas, from Chico Tacos Mother in Green Salsa in Flautas in Guacamole. <laughs> Our next guest speaker joined the Office of the Naval Research, ONR, in April 2018 as the Director of Mission Support. Mr. Tony Torres Ramos is responsible for providing a full range of corporate business and logistical functions to enable ONR's mission of planning and managing science and technology research for the Department of the Navy. More recently, Mr. Torres Ramos was the Department of the Navy's Director of the Office of Civilian Human Resources, say that really fast, appointed to the Senior Executive Service in June 2013, Mr. Torres Ramos has 40 years of federal service to include, <laughs> to include more than 23 years of active service in the United States Marine Corps. Mr. Torres Ramos holds oh, a master's degree in human resource management. He received the Navy Superior Civilian Service Award in 2007, 2011, and 2018. Please join me in welcoming Mr. So, yo soy Puerto Riqueño. I am Puerto Rican. There's three types of Puerto Ricans. There's the Puerto Rican from Puerto Rico, I'm a Puerto Rican from Puerto Rico. There's a Puerto Rican from New York. I was born in New York, so I'm a Puerto Rican from New York. So I'm a New York Rican. And then there's a Puerto Rican in the heart. That no matter where you are, you identify yourself as a Puerto Rican. If you have an opportunity to make things better and you don't, then you're wasting your time on it. Roberto Clemente, one of my heroes. Encantado de estar aquí, encantado de conocerlo. Es un, es un placer de mi corazón, te doy la gracia. Thank you for this warm welcome, honored and humbled to be here. As a representative of thousands of Hispanic civilian employees at the Department of the Navy. I learned early on that I want to be part of something bigger than myself. I learned early on that I want to leave it in better. Shake the one I got there. I learned early on that my passion is to make things better for those that come after me. So I said yes. <laughs> and I went up to become the director of the National Security Personnel System. And I was here, there, and there, selling this thing. And you guys were throwing crap at me. I don't want to go there. I don't want to do it. I said, hey, we got no choices. Congress gave it to us. We got to do it. And that was, that was a wonderful experience. <laughs> and I was willing, because at the end, when, when, when there was a change of administration and so forth, there was another law that said, hey, get rid of that darn thing. And we got rid of it. And they said, Tony, you know where all the, 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 uh, the bodies are buried. Can you take us out of NSPS? Sure, I need a job anyway. <laughs> and here's the kicker there. That job, that yes, that opportunity to go from five minutes from my house to a commute that's kicking my behind every single day today was a temporary job. Even though I was a permanent employee, fat, dumb, and happy down to Quantico, collecting those two paychecks, I said yes because the answer is yes. And I stayed in the Office of Civilian Human Resources for like 13 years or whatever it was. And my first permanent position in the Office of Civilian Human Resources was my SCS position. Because I knew that if I brought my A game every single day, I'd be all right. Now, I was always looking over my shoulder. Oh, man, I'm not getting everybody in NSPS. I don't care where I sit. Man, what am I going to do? There's always go back to Puerto Rico, get a little thing on the beach, drink some rum. Look at the fine, beautiful scenery of Puerto Rico. <laughs> Mountains and the ebbs and the flows of the waves and the winds and the hurricanes. <laughs> so, an opportunity. Listen, our men and women forward deployed rely on each one of us to bring our A-game to work every day. 
They rely on us to contribute and work together. Tapping into what I call the wisdom of the room. We owe them nothing less. We really do. So I ask you, what can we, what can you do to provide an environment where collaboration and free exchange of ideas is the norm rather than the extreme? We have to continue to set the example to come to the table with an open mind, to let down the boundaries and differences, and embrace the best solution for our service and ultimately for our country. We have to do that. I ask that you demonstrate. I'm asking you all to think about this seriously. I ask that you demonstrate moral courage. I ask that you demonstrate passionate leadership. I ask that you be true, ethical, and that you serve with integrity of purpose and action. That you serve with integrity of purpose and action. I ask that you take responsibility for your inclusion. Where's my EEO folks? All right? I ask that you take, take, responsibility, <laughs> take responsibility for your inclusion. I ask that you take personal responsibility for the value that you provide every single day. I ask that you do today's work at your highest level. I ask that you model the better version of yourself every single day. I ask that you inspire and share your vision. I ask that you challenge the process to make it better. I ask that you enable others, your neighbors, your colleagues to act. I ask that you encourage the heart to give. I ask that you are not afraid to fail, and therefore you will succeed. Not afraid to fail, so you clear the path to succeed. Lincoln, challenge us all, live up to what light you have. I'd like to leave you with this. I am not bound to win. I am not bound to win. But I am bound to be true. I am bound to succeed. I am, ba I am not bound to succeed. But I am bound to live up to the light that I might have. Thank you so much for allowing me to be here today. It has been a great honor to be here and to celebrate our culture and our nation's successes with you today. Thank you. I encourage all of us to see that everyone in our work areas, not just those we feel comfortable around, are connected and feel part of the Keyport family. Find someone to talk to or share a meal with. Look for the person you do not know or the one you've never talked to. Just one kind word can change someone's entire day. Maybe we can all start by taking advantage of the potluck happening after this event. If we do, we might just learn something interesting about someone and they might just learn something interesting about us. This way, we can come to a complete understanding of each other as human beings. Now, I would like to invite Mr. Bill Carlson, our business director for Newick Division Keyport, to join me as we recognize today's guest speakers with a gift of gratitude for their presence and participation. This is a very, uh, very coveted box with, uh, inside it where you can put your valuables and all your memories from today. <laughs> So I, I'm reminded at these times of something I heard Bob Dole say once, which was uh, having speakers like me is like having a corpse at a funeral. You have to have one, but they're not expected to say much. So, uh, uh, 
I just want to thank also uh, all of our SCPM managers, uh, our, our special emphasis managers. Our, if you're here, please stand. And if you're a co-chair, also stand. I want to recognize them because when we're talking about inclusion, they all got together and said, you know, we've been doing our events and our things like this on our own. Why aren't we getting together? So I just wanted to uh, congratulate you for recognizing that and also just thank you for setting the example. You're doing a great job. So. I just wanted to tie this thing together and I think it was actually kind of prescient that uh, during this thing we had this cherry picker going and you could hear the backup alarm going because in, in the midst of us talking about diversity and inclusion and all that, we have work to get done. And all of us are here because of that purpose and that reason. And so I really enjoy that we, we celebrate diversity. I think it's absolutely fantastic. But as the, as the business guy that's supposed to be thinking, what about the business of the, of, the, of the command and what do we get done, I'm reminded that diversity is good business. If you think about it, does any of you today, uh, before you came here and you were doing your work, are any of you doing work today just by yourself? Is there anything we get done anymore that isn't done by a team? And the answer is no. None of the stuff we do, it's so complex, it's so complicated, it's so all over the place. We can't do anything for the warfighter, of which we are part of that team, without other folks. And as soon as you make that conclusion, you want the best team you can possibly get. And as soon as you make that conclusion, you realize, I need different people from all walks of life, all backgrounds, all cultures, all experiences, all different ways of thinking, because when I get that, I get teams that can really knock it out of the park. So diversity makes good business sense all by itself. Uh, and, but we, as again, we wanna continue to celebrate and all of those cultural things that we all bring to the table. But and as this family that you see, or, or, that you're part of, as you look around and you see each other, the reason we're here on this base on this particular spot is to get a mission done that we cannot get done unless we have good, strong teams and we have that diversity throughout them. So the words you heard Paul talk about and everybody else about how do we include people, how do we get them to participate, that's where the cultural differences and, and the cultural similarities come in because we want to understand each other. If we don't understand each other, then we're probably not going to include each other well and the team isn't going to perform. And that's what I'm most interested as the command business director is. I want strong performing teams, because as Tony said, I want the fight to be so unfair, no one even wants to show up to the game. So that's what we're after. So, uh...